welcome to the course disaster recovery and build back better my name is ram satish i'm an assistant professor in department of architecture and planning iit roorkee today i am going to deliver a lecture which has actually been prepared by dr subhajyoti samadar from kyoto dpri kyoto university so because of his non availability i am trying to learn from what he has worked and i'm going to prepare i mean uh, present you about his work in bangladesh and that is on diffusion of disaster preparedness technology and what pioneers contribute so this is what i'm going to talk about first of all uh, today we are going to talk about the bangladesh and many of you understand that you know in bangladesh has been recently uh, not recently but at least from 1971 they got the independence from pakistan and what you can see here is is a is lied in a very rich ecosystem of the sundarbans and this whole part is you have all these backwaters and much of this area has been prone to the floods and uh part of it is on to the coastal side and as well as the backwater areas and it has a very rich cultural importance one is being an islamic nation and also partly it has some because it has been split from the bengal the larger part of the bengal so it has a very rich cultural traditions of both what you see in the west bengal and at the same time as the islamic as a nation and this bangladesh after becoming independent from 1971 and till 1980s a lot of development programs has been worked and unicef has been working with the bangladesh government sector in order to promote various vulnerable situations in the Uh, flood prone areas and as well as the disaster affected areas and one of the major concern here is the water and the drinking water risks because especially in the coastal bangladesh the provision of drinking water because of its saline content and how various tribal communities and the coastal communities survive and what are the difficulties they face so that is where many of the agencies and also different efforts have been kept forward in order to provide them the hand pumps ground water resources and as well as some kind of they rely on the surface water which is basically on the pond or river water resources but from 80s to the 90s due to various other factors with the climate change or the industrial aspects of it this is where they have faced with two important problems one is the arsenic contamination which is evident from the ground water resources and the water salinity so how the saline water is not you know it's not good for consuming for a domestic purposes okay it can be used for a different purposes you know but for you know, for a daily needs you know this is one of the important uh, problem which the bangladeshi community especially the people who are living in the coastal areas they have come across with this kind of problems and and that is where the thought of how we can address these vulnerable situations because these are going to have a long term impacts both in terms of the physical and the mental health of the inhabitants one is it can create a lot of uh, chronic diseases diarrhea and you know it can have some kind of biological issues not only on the human habitation but also it can have on the flora and the fauna as well so that is where there's a kind of innovation which came into the picture and that is where amamiju which is a kind of innovation as a japanese technology it is talks about rain water harvesting so in japanese ama means river and 
Miju is a water. So, it talks about the river water harvested. So, what they try to do is, so they try to give this kind of tanks, uh, water collection tanks and they are collecting the rain water and they keep it for 6 months, they storage it for 6 months and then able to reuse. So, this is a kind of technology which they have developed. And this has been uh, one of the innovation where uh, it was needed for that particular geographic and the climatic conditions and the vulnerable conditions. And they have tried to install in various rural villages which are been in need of this kind of technology. And now if you look at the map and this whole region what you can see is these are all the severely affected areas and the moderately affected areas and the mild affected areas. And the similarly we have the mild affected and very mild affected and not affected there's the safe sites as well. But then it started with it is not just the whole country, but then the challenge is how to diffuse this technology to a larger setup, to a larger the whole nation. So, it is it might start everything will start with one and but it has to diffuse further and how who will take this? Who are these innovators? Who are these pioneers who are going to take this particular transfer of technology to a wider community? So, it has this is one of the challenge because on one side we are talking about capturing different groups of communities and uh, making them use of this technology and realize them. But the challenge is to bring in much bigger scale how we can diffuse this product. So, in his uh, previous classes also Dr. Shubhajyoti Samadhar have also discussed about some issues with Bangladesh and uh, this is also an another aspect of the arsenic content and how innovation could be diffused and what are the challenges and how one can assess it. So, in front of us the biggest challenge is not just only an innovation, but taking this innovation to the rural poor, to the wider communities. Okay. So, how to take it further? and how to diffuse this process. Now, any product whether it is a tank, whether it is an iPhone, whether it is any other remote driving car, right. So, any product which is coming into the society for the benefit of society, okay, it is not just a tank which is collecting water, but the first thing is one has to look at it is a very risky decision whether to take it or not. Imagine someone has invented tomorrow a car driving driven with just water, not with petrol. So, what happens? People will start adapting because they keep what putting water on it and they keep driving it, then they can save a little bit more money, but then what happens to the larger ecosystem? What happens to the larger habitat? So, a small invention can lead to a bigger risk. Similarly, a autopilot car when subjected in an Indian road unless if it is not properly tested. So, how to take this risk to start with? The person who is starting in the beginning he is obviously taking a huge risk because he do not know what is the consequences of it. It could be a drug which is coming into the market to solve to cure a particular disease, but then we are not sure how it is going to have a future consequences. So, normally it is our human tendency we try to see that have others have implemented are they ok, has it been tested. Forget about everything just take a small thing you are buying some product in Amazon. Many of them I have seen when they look at it they see the reviews the reviews how this product is, the reviews how that supplier is, what is the star ratings and nowadays I have seen even when you go to your doctor, hospital people are also looking at 
the feedback because that feedback process is telling you whether it is a good doctor, whether the hospital is treating well or not. So, this is how you know we are relying on a source of information or attacks of information coming from different networks. So, this is where the information seeking we are able to seek some information and we are able to process it development or activity. So, this is a very important decision making process whether I install new technology or not because it is very risky you do not know what is the consequences and we try to rely on this information seeking you know that how we seek for information and we process it we develop it we make our own analysis of whether we should go further or not. In order to implement these tanks one is sharing information on innovation whether someone's feedback someone who have used it that can also reduce some risks you will familiar you will become familiar with certain risks which some else someone else have fa faced it or they have encountered also you will get some familiarity about the uncertainties from an early adopter to the late adopters the how information flows it is a kind of bell graph which I will discuss in the further lesson where how the early adopter he takes a high risk because he does not know anything what is going to happen next. Individuals are influenced by others learn from others and eventually change their decision. So, someone wants to buy this they were initially very fascinated to buy this product or to take this to implement this product, but then they learn that this is the after effects of it, there is the side effects of it and that is what they might change the decisions. And now it is in the social media, we are getting a very unreliable data, it is difficult to say there are many much of contradicting data with lot of information we are also getting into a confused state. So, the earlier innovators we call them as the innovators because these are the first people who started using it they may they have taken a high risk to take this as how this particular product is going to work. And then this is how the feedback have reached to the early adopters. So, then the immediate network whether it is a friend, whether it is a neighbor, whether it is a relative uh, that is about a kind of micro level networks through their personal or a direct networks. And then this is what we said about is going to have a bell graph and then there is another group who comes at the end they try to see at how people have adapted to it and then they finally they are more in a conservative, conservative approach and these after having a serious testing of this understanding how this has been tested option. So, that is where they try then they try to decide upon it. They are referred normally as laggards or there is also these early majority and the late majority. Here we are talking about I found this really it is awesome tool because they just tried it. But then you know at this stage I wish I do tried using this earlier it is great. So, you know they sometimes repent it is better we have tried it before it has been a successful. You know, so, like that these laggards this is how there is also we talked about the micro level network which has to do with the personal and direct diffusions. And the second one is with the macro level networks which has an indirect networks how from, uh, from how what we are using in Delhi and how it spreads to different cities or different communities across and this is where uh, the macro level networks it goes along with a very different indirect networks as well. So, this is what we uh, talked about, but these two you know uh, contribute at different levels of diffusion. One is in a very close in a more reliable system because someone can come and check it. Uh, even in a place like IIT I am living someone is buying a computer. So, I keep getting calls that you bought that that how is the feedback 
So shall I take it? What is the price? How did you, how this facility is there or not there? So all this aspect has been discussed. So similarly, when you are looking at a larger picture, that is again the macro level networks, whether it has been implemented in Delhi, whether it was implemented in Roorkee, you know. So this is how we looked at it. Now, if we take the perception of the most innovative and the conservative, if you see an example, now here a person A who have a group of five friends and he is the one who has actually taken the risk of starting it. And then, whereas in the person D, he's still in a conservative, but his all his surroundings, he's still relying on his own ways of thinking. Though his network have started erupting, he takes time to think about it. So that is where we talk about who is more innovative, the one <coughs> who immediately, you know, takes that risk to test it. And the person B and person C again that comes in, you know, here again in this case it is also looked at how other people have already adopted and either this person have influenced others so that gradually it changes. And despite of other friends still he is being stable, you know, but this is how the very innovative level to a conservative level. There is also the second argument of it is how in time, how the exposure and the threshold, you know, how it varies. In time one, like you have, there are two reference points which we are referring in this small example. One is A and one is B. And A has again the five friends and B has five friends and they have their own networks. And this we can see by this diagram, we can see is a kind of a kind of community network. In this, a has an exposure of 60% around him who are using these tanks and B has none. So we call at time phase 2, so by looking at his case, now A has adapted that and B still has not. But when you look at the time 5, now a have adopted and also it has spread it to the larger community, but now B has adopted. There are two ways of looking at it. We can still call the A who have taken a risk in a very initial state, how he have adopted. And we call, we can call him at a innovative, at you know, in a whole community sector, he is the one who started that is innovative at a macro level. And B could be looked in a more of a conservative level. But in the other sense, if you look at it in the B, even at time 5, his, none of four of his friends have not still adopted, but he is one who has taken a step forward. If you look at a micro level of that, B as a community, so we can still call him more innovative in that context at a micro level. So there is different perceptions of looking at that from the time factor and the scale factor of it. Now, till now what we discussed is the innovations at what level, who are these innovators, okay, and what are the characteristics of these innovators and external influence, that is where these innovators we call are the pioneers who take this information further and diffuse it further. There is a personal networks which again the micro level and the direct networks which could be with the social influence and the norms. But the system networks which talks about the macro net level which has an indirect networks which is through the social learning. So Shubhajyoti, Samadhar and his team they worked as a, a project in some remote area of Bangladesh and how this setup of tanks have been diffused and how they did this whole survey and so these are some of the tanks which have been constructed and they have done a lot of survey in that. So they have interacted with a variety of stakeholders. They learnt what are the reasons how 
they could learn about this product, how, what is the feedback about it. So, this is a variety of aspects they look at into it. So, what are the, the adapter categories? This is a bell shaped curve which shows the individual innovativeness and percentages in each category. There are four, five aspects as we discussed the luggers at the end, the innovators in the front. And then you have the early adopters, early majority and the late majority. So, this is a kind of bell shaped curve. And what they did was they did like both the micro level and the macro level understanding where with the micro neighborhood networks they set up this kind of threshold you know the which have the early adopters, early majority, majority adopters, late majority and luggers and these threshold what are these threshold very low threshold, low threshold, high threshold, very high threshold and similarly and who are these early adopters? These at a macro level or regional level, these are the individuals whose time of adoption was greater than one standard deviation earlier than the average time of adoption. So, these are referred as early adopters. And early and late majority adopters which is the central phase are the individuals whose time of adoption was bounded by one standard deviation earlier and later than the average. And the laggards are those individuals who adopted later than one standard deviation of the mean. So, this is how they configured. And with the micro level or the neighborhood level, the, as I told you that there is a very low threshold, low threshold, high threshold and the laggards. So, you have the personal network threshold which is defined as the adoption network exposure at the time of adoption. Exposure is a proportion of adopters in an individual's person network at a point of time. So, if you look at it now in all these time phases, here it is only one person have a, uh, and then two, the three, but then finally it has influence one. So, it is, it is the exposure in the proportion of adopters in an individual person's network at a point of time. So, the time aspect plays an important or how it is dynamic and how it is influencing parameters. And I have already discussed about this very low threshold. Again, the adopters or the individual whose network threshold value is greater than one standard deviation lower than the average net net network threshold. And similarly, the low threshold adopters and the high threshold adopters have a personal social networks bounded by one standard, one standard deviation lower than the higher average. Then in the high network threshold adopters where whose personal network threshold one standard deviation higher than the average. So, this is a matrix they developed in and then the tank adopters distribution at macro or the and the micro level if you look at it the early adopters is a 7.4 percent you know and how it is changing and from 7.4 and then it goes on to 4.1 and then this is how it is going in a kind of uh, it is changing further you know. So, that is where they looked at this kind of graph and also, what are the major, they also looked at what are the major uh, influencing aspects, you know, what are the aspects that influence the decision making process. Now, again here, if you look at it, the early adopter from 7.4 percent, it goes to the 2.7. So, the early adopters, so it gradually reduces and whereas, the early majority, it goes on an increasing component. So, who are these? Because these pioneers, how they act as opinion makers? Because that is where, because their opinion is a higher value, because they are the one who used it in the first and forehand. Opinion leaders score. So, they have used a kind of opinion leadership network. So, please name us three persons with whom you often turn for opinions and suggestions to make any decisions on your personal and family matters. So, who, um, who are you more relied with, you know, who are these, so that is how, how they are connected with it. And 
this is where they adopted the concept of degree centrality and this is a quantitative measure technique where the degree as a degree of a node and it depicts the opportunities and alternatives that one node has as we discussed in the before also how each node has have a multiple connections. The nodes with higher degree centrality is more central. So, because the more connections it have and that is where it becomes more central. So, someone let us say in a community, a community leader has used that. Then, then he is the one where the community is relying upon his understanding or his decision. So, that is where that is more central that becomes more central. And this is again they made this similar matrix to understand the opinion leadership score with the degree centrality and with both as a macro level and the micro level. So, these are some of the analysis. So, now you can see that you know from 6 the early majority about 16.8 and then later it came down at a and who are these pioneers and what are the various channels how this is disseminated. Education. Now, each point is counted for each academic class and a person educated up to a class 1 receives 0.1 and persons completed master's degrees is 0.15. So, for the illiterate the score is 0. So, like that income, household monthly income and again here the socio-economic characteristics of the adopters, how income has played an important role, whether it has played an important role because someone has to look at the affordability aspect of it. And again if you look at it here in the late adapters it is again at a micro level it is going the income has also shown a positive aspect. And again education how it plays at it influences the individual decision making process. And if you look at it in all the cases you know like you have in the early adopters still the lowest threshold is about 11.54 and the laggards is about 13.5. And external influence they talk about the media consumption and cosmopolitanness. Like in TV is one channel how people know about this innovative aspect. But here in this study TV has score they have also assigned some points how often do you watch TV news programs in a week. So, where one point is referred to TV watching once in a week, seven in a week, zero is do not watch. But then in this finding they have found that the newspaper reading has given you know the more diffusive process rather than the TV watching. And cosmopolitanness how visiting the nearest city, how you learn from the nearest cities. And because media consumption TV watching is also an important aspect. But then here here the newspaper reading have shown much more positive ways of communication. So, like that the same matrix has been tested in different aspects. And here this is where the risk perception you know that is measured based on the adopters perceptions on three aspects of drinking water. And because we are talking about how this particular tank having this tank how it has improved or not. And the drinking water quality of your family. So, they talked about from good to poor causing health issues problems of our family members. So, that is again you know regarding the health and the daily fetching burden to what extent they have to carry on this whole process. And then again they mapped everything in this kind of matrix the perception the risk perception has been also have been mapped. So, in that way what happened was this whole innovators as we talk about the very initial users of that particular innovation they are one of the important pioneers and their matters a lot that how this whole their understanding of the product and and how it has to be taken care of to disseminate to a wider communities and to a larger network starting from a very micro level network and to a macro level network. And this is one of the method which they have adopted, but there are different ways one can actually look at the centrality, the degree of uh, you know uh, the um, and also the putting setting up the thresholds of it, the various methods of how 
this particular pioneers play an important role in the diffusion of the innovative practices. Thank you very much.